back to <laughs> Hey, ladies and gentlemen, right. Thomas Karad, Coach Caleb Porter. Jacob, do you want to start us off with a question? Caleb, this kind of new style of play, last two games, are you kind of eager to see it against this type of top, top level competition you're about to face? Yeah, I mean, we've evolved a little bit. I wouldn't say we're like drastic. making like drastic yeah, right. style of play changes, but like I said, a little bit, a little bit more compact, less high pressing. Um, although we still want to be aggressive, you know, in our lines, we don't want to be in a low block all game. Um, but definitely an emphasis on being compact and playing in transition. Still, still uh, priorities to keep the ball some, but with the way kind of the match states have gone the last two games, the road game KC, you know, we were okay not having the ball. Um, so this game, you know, I would say it's gonna be similar in terms of what we wanna do, but there'll definitely be some tweaks. Um, but our mindset is to go on the road, get our first win on the road, get our third clean sheet in a row, and to get our third positive result in a row. Because in football, um, it's very streaky. And this is all over the world, maybe even more so in our league. And you could lo lose three on the spin and immediately win two on the bounce. Um, that's all over the world. But in our league, for sure, if you look at every team, um, they're gonna have patches that are up, that are down. Um, can we take this momentum right now? Can we get three positive results in a row? Can we get our first win on the road against a good team and get our third clean sheet? I just want to make sure that they get on. Sorry. Don't need to be sorry. It's important. I'm not sticking to batteries, so we will proceed. Sorry about that. Well, I don't need my. I can't hear you. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I'll speak louder. What? Uh, thanks for the. <laughs> thanks for the time, Coach. Uh, you, you talked about teams uh, being streaky, and you're now playing against New England, who last year Supporters Shield winners, but this year with CONCACAF Champions League and they've had injuries, they brought in a lot of new players, lost some big names from last year. What are you seeing from New England currently in their in their form and, um, yeah. Yeah, I think you can see similar to what we went through last year. You know, it happens to everybody in our league. Um, you put a lot in the Champions League, you have a great year the year prior. Um, so that Champions League becomes more of an emphasis and then that's gone and then now your players sometimes are, um, caught in between their hunger, getting back on the league, that takes a couple games or, you know, you know, or, a, or a period to kind of get through that hangover from the Champions League. Um, you take a few injuries, which they have with Bo being out. Because you have a good year, you lose a few players um, with Buchanan. Um, so I think they're figuring it out, but I thought last game, moving into the 4-2-3-1 um, really helped them and, um, you know, obviously we'll see with, with Bo potentially being back in if they go back to the diamond. We know they prefer that, but uh, with Bo out, um, you know, I thought the decision of Bruce to, to go 4-2-3-1 was a good one. I think it helped their shape a little bit. They inserted Rivera. Um, in a lot of ways, they're, they're still the same team though in that 4-2-3-1. They create a lot of chances through Gil or Heel. Um, you know, it's always a tough one to pronounce. Um, <laughs> But, uh, you know, he's a key guy that we have to do a good job of eliminating his, or minimizing, I don't think you eliminate it at all, but minimize his final passing. He floats everywhere, he overloads wide, he comes deep, and he's lethal on that left foot playing final balls. Um, their outside backs are extremely aggressive and athletic. They push on very high and get a lot of crosses into Buxa. And then they're a good pressing team as well. So we have a good read on them. We know what we need to be aware of. We also know how we can exploit them in a few ways. Um, those are things we talk about with the team and I think our group will be prepared and ready. Um, but I, I think they're a team that's, you know, figured it out, you know, whereas three, two, three, four games ago, they were in that hangover mode and struggling a little bit. I, I, I think they're, um, they're kind of back in the wheel, you know, and, and you know, can we, uh, go on the road and get a good, good result for us. And I think it will mean a lot, really, because this was the, the best team in league history last year. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, with James, uh, playing at the winger position, but his tendencies to float inside, uh, 
how important is his role and maybe the characteristics of him as a, a player um, into how you guys are playing right now? Yeah, he's just another soccer player on the field. He's smart. He's a um, very good defender. He's quick. Um, you know, he's he's a, he's just a good player. You know, so we brought him in knowing he was versatile, that he could play the six, the eight, the ten, and, and wide, um, different formations as well. So I think right now he just he's in our top eleven. So um, we're playing him in a in a way, and we'll continue to play him in a way where. Um, it suits him, suits the game, and suits our team. We can move him around, you know, in different spots and pair him with different guys. And you know, he's he's left-footed, so you you see we've played him in on the right, on the left. We've played him, you know, in, in a double pivot as well. Um, we can play in a four-two-three as one of the eights. So there's a lot of flexibility with him. Uh, very good player, and the guys like him, yeah. like him a lot. And you know, there's a reason he was in La Liga, you know, and played some games there. So. He's a quality player. One more for me, um, real quick. Uh, the the defensive performance against Kansas City, talk about building off that foundation, but yet there was two changes in the back line over this last game, and still there's no change. What, what does that say about who this group is? Yeah, I think our depth is, we're proud of that. Um, we've had to make a few changes this year. It shows that we're preparing not only the 11, but you know, 22 guys to be ready to step in. I think you saw that with Marley. He's had a lot of reps at right back um, this year. So he was ready to step in. Um, also, also with Josh, we know what Josh can do. Obviously he's played that role a lot and um, that was pretty seamless. So it's great to have good depth. And uh, you know, last year you saw when we had to make changes, um, it wasn't quite as seamless. So that's, that's great to see. Um, now as we get healthier and healthier, there'll probably be a few more decisions with regards to formation, tactics, all that. But um, we're, trying to we're trying to approach it in a one-off every week, you know, and really look at the opponent and look at, who, you know, what's our best lineup, best system in the one-off game. That flexibility, I think, is key with this team. Yeah. Just mentioned how James likes to come in the middle, too. If you know, without giving away what you want to do, but if you stick with the same formation, put Lucas on the left, do you kind of run a, a risk at all of having too many players kind of congest the midfield, or do you feel like the guys on the wings there like can, can extend the defense enough to get to get the width you want? Yeah, good question. I think you always have to create um, width and length, depth in, in how you play, and um, that leads to penetration always. So. Um, first principle attack is penetration. How can you penetrate? There's different ways with the ball, uh, movement behind the line, width. Um, so we for sure need width. But with Pedro Santos, um, you're going to get width. So you don't worry about the width too much. Um, you know, last year when we didn't have attacking outside backs, you worry about the width if you're playing with narrow wingers. Um, you know, but. We can also get width out of our, our eights, you know, and, and bring our wingers in. So there's flexibility. We got to think about a little bit, again, the balance of being on the road, playing a very good attacking team, how much we're trying to create um, and, and open up uh, to create and how much we need to be closed up, compact. Um, so we can create widths, width in different ways on the right and left side. So I think you'll see a few tweaks on that that makes sense to the kind of group we're playing and the opponent we're playing against. Mm -hmm. And last thing, just how did Lucas progress this week? He's not ready to start, um, but we think he'll play an increased role in the match. So this is this is kind of a big picture uh, idea question. So Josh told us this really interesting anecdote about the, the ball to Derek, that Derek scored in the last game, and how that kind of sequence of play is actually something they discussed uh, a couple different times leading up to in trainings past, right? And then they connected on that the day before in training. That to me feels like it's an example of kind of culture in the locker room and the relationships that exist there. How much of an asset, like that, that's like a great example of, of how that can be an asset, right? What do you kind of chalk up the 
essentially the reasons why that's able to happen, right? And, and what kind of cultivates those relationships to then showcase success, tangible, like literal success on the field. Again, going back to your question on width and depth, um, that was something we talked about in training early in the game, making sure we get movement behind the line. And, you know, when you're playing James, he's not as much of a runner behind the line. Um, so, you know, it's important that through Derek, who is direct, um, that we get that movement behind the line with at least at least one winger. So that was something we talked about with Josh on that side. He's good at playing those balls. So whether Derek plays on the left or the right, we need to get depth um, and length and and obviously penetration from him off the ball. So um, on the training ground, you put them in situations, you give them ideas, and then they have to execute inside the line. So that was very good execution out of those guys. Thanks, Caleb. Thank you. Thanks, Caleb. Yep.